ReleaseWire helps businesses connect with interested journalists and bloggers. Check out the link in the description to save 25% on your first press release. Admiral, radar shows that we have liberals approaching at 3 o'clock, and libertarians at 9 o'clock, and conservatives at 6 o'clock. They're coming from every angle, every viewpoint. Oh, it's Political Radar with your hosts, Rhonda and Elliot. Hey, all you political junkies, welcome to Political Radar, the best 30 minutes of unscripted and uncensored political talk. You're here all day. We have a plethora of guests with us today. That's two. That's two. That's, that's a lot. That's a lot for because us. Because big personalities is, oh. is what counts. So, Cassandra <laughs> Hotel- 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 Okay, I knew I would murder that. That's okay. And Trisha Nell. Um, and they are important because Cassandra is a District 8 resident as well as a Colburn neighborhood resident. Right across the street from the pool. Right across the street from the newly approved Colburn pool. And Trisha is the chief legal correspondent for Political Radar. That's what I was told today. Yay. Thank you. Guess what your salary is? It's, it's a... It's a plethora of money. <laughs> coffee. We're going to pay you in coffee. Do you mind? What? We don't have a budget no, for that. Tr- Trish, <laughs> Trisha also is uh, uh, the, would you say that you're the lead attorney for Trisha Nell? For my own law, law firm. That's correct. Okay. And I've been practicing for 16 years. Right on. Good job. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Thank you. So today we're going to talk, wow, um, pool, council, attorneys, what else? I'm too hot. You too hot for this? Felonies, uh, misdemeanor. Felonies, already, misdemeanors. I'm already okay. hyped um. up. <laughs> so episode 54, let's start with the pool. So the Colburn pool, five years of all kinds of you know, meetings and Did it start five years ago? And it started five years ago, yeah. Oh my it did. God. Yeah, it started it, actually with Jess, it it seems with like Chris Beery and then Jesse Brunette, or it, was it Jesse Brunette? I remember it starting with Jesse Brunette. It might have started with Chris, but then Jesse was the alderman at the time when it really started taking off. I think the first meeting I went to was in 2011. They had like a neighborhood meeting at Colburn Park to talk about it. And it was like a, yeah, let's redo the pool. Great, sounds good. Neighborhood meeting. A neighborhood meeting about a neighborhood pool and wanting to just keep it a pool. And for people that don't know what we're talking about, what we're, what we're referencing, because there might be people that don't, we're talking about a pool that is in the city of Green Bay, which is in uh, off the west side of um, Green Bay, District 8, which is uh, the alderman is Chris Weary on the Green Bay City Council. And this is a pool that has been, it's an aging pool, obviously, and needed some some serious work. But they want the pool to be an Olympic-sized competition you know, pool so that... They can host meets here. We don't necessarily, do we have to go through the conversation of how how that's not necessarily possibly viable? We're not going to go there. What we're going to talk about is the price tag. Well, it tag. is related. Well, it's related, but tag. we're going to talk yeah. about the price tag. So the price tag, according to our local newspaper, is up to 11 point, what is it? It's a lot. 11.2 11. 11. million, and yeah. that's, that's, but that's including all of the all costs. Of the, all so of like the costs. Like the building costs right. and the operating costs. And like the there's, pool there's is 2.3, but it, it, that, no. See, no. somebody said that, and that is wrong. That's what they're printing. The pool is like 6 million. No. It's like 6.4 yeah. million, and then the interest, the demolition of the old pool, operating costs, all of that brings it up to 11.2 million. The increase was like 2 million. So I okay. No so I'm confused three, why yeah. anybody would even have to. Well, the pool is actually only two. Okay, I thought but, the pool itself. But the reality is, how know. much is the city of Green Bay on the hook for? That's okay. what I want to know. That, that's a good question. That's the question. That's the question. Well, it sounds like 11 million minus potentially. I don't know if that includes or doesn't include the million dollars that was supposedly raised. Okay, so a million dollars was raised. Well, promised. It wasn't actually. No right. one's got it in their hands. It, <laughs> right. it was promised. Let's right. be real. Let's let's. That's the reality of that. Absolutely. So then. This money is going to be bonded. Is that what they decided? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I think so. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. So, so that I'm means there will be interest on it. Yes. Right. Okay. And the money and the price went up because it took forever for this to happen. There was this phantom Tundra Lodge proposal that came into play, and I'm sorry, I don't believe that was even legit. I don't think that was real. I think it was a, something to derail what was happening. That's my personal opinion. I know you have yours in the pool, but um, I don't know how much that would have mattered for the price tag. But the reality is, it looks like it's probably going to happen, right? 
I think so. Thus far, and, and unless something changes, which as we made a mini conversation prior to this, there there could be things that could possibly derail it. But the, as of now, it's going full force. So the mayor could possibly veto that pool. Not to say that I've actually, I'm not saying I've heard that he can do that, but um, it's likely that he won't because it would be more of a political suicide than he has already you know, well, involved in. Who's in favor of this pool? I think. I, well, there I, are people, clearly. But There's the a, overwhelming just, majority either don't care or don't want it. Or okay. just think, oh, fun, we're getting a new pool. Well, that's or they don't of, know. Yeah, they don't know. They, about don't, it. they don't know the extent of it. They yeah. don't understand it. Or there's a small pool of pe- small pool of people, no oh, pun very intended. Good. Very good. Um, you should quit your day job. <laughs> uh, Rhonda, can you kick him under the table? Um, I'm grabbing him right now. Thank can't you. you tell? Um, who maybe have children or such that think that this is a wonderful idea and this is the way in Green Bay they're going to make their children successful and join the Olympics and have have the dream, yeah, honestly, uh, because you we know how parents can be, and this is a way that we can put Green Bay another way we can put us on the, you know, on the map. You know, I, and I really hope they're successful. I mean, I I do believe that when they say these things, they truly believe it, and and they feel that this is a viable, you know, option to you know something to bring into the city that's going to bring revenue, that's going to bring. Awareness. I mean, this they really believe it. I mean, they fought for five years. You don't fight for but five the, years for something you don't believe. I'm not done talking. That. You don't you don't <laughs> you don't fight for five years for something you don't believe in. And so it's hard. I struggle with this because I I loved seeing people come together to raise that money. Agreed. Right? And and I think when, when your city government asks you to do something like that and you respond and you and you you know, you make it happen. I mean, that was the biggest mistake they made in the first place. And then it was all of a sudden, well, you know, the costs have gone up. We're not sure. It's like, what did you think was going to happen? If you couldn't just finalize it and be done with it. The problem I I foresee with this, though, is that we don't have any type of local um, schooling or uh, should I say that that supports this type of a, a a sport and an arena. Whereas like with Cornerstone, I, if you remember that back when they started as a small entity, they've grown, but we have the gamblers. We had St. Norbert college. We had hockey teams that helped them grow. Now we're, now we're bringing in big, you know, bigger arenas. They're hosting, you know, large, um, you know, yearly um, tournaments and it's a place to be, but with the swimming situation, we don't have schools that have, a, you know, Olympic type or competitive, big competitive swimming teams that are going out. And so I don't know where we would come up. And even if they do, people don't go to watch swimming. I'm sorry. You know, they, they go Elliot, to watch the big sport. I don't know about that. House. I don't know about it, that. I was at the uh, downtown Y um, and just walked in to work out one day and there were a, like a shit ton of people in that. Yeah. Place. How many is that though? I don't know, but there was, you could barely move. But that's a tiny little facility. So a hundred people would be. There was more than a hundred people there. Okay. So okay. let's talk to Cassandra though, because Cassandra, you live in that area. Yes. You are a district eight resident. Yes. Um, You voiced your opinion that you are not. You you don't you we didn't did. support the Olympic size pool, but you wanted a neighborhood pool. We did. We we started off like I said, it was very general. Let's rebuild the pool. It's crumbling. It's it, it needs to be rebuilt, and we were in support of that. And then this project just kept growing and growing. And uh, myself and several other other neighbors were thinking that that this isn't really what <laughs> we were on board for here. Mm-hmm. Uh, an Olympic size swim pool, competitive meets. We just want a place for our kids to go swim. Um, so it just really snowballed. And it wasn't really people from our neighborhood who were pushing for this. So One would almost say they were from Ashwaubenon. Y- you, might, <laughs> y- you might say Ashwaubenon, Hobart, Pier. But it was very frustrating because the minute that we voiced our opposition, all of a sudden we were against kids. We were against swimming. And we felt like, not at all. That's, that's not it at all. We, we don't see the need for this Olympic-sized swimming pool directly across the street from our house. A place for kids to go swimming in the summer is enough. And that pool does not draw a big crowd. If you go up there on a 90-degree day, you might see 10 to 15 people swimming there. 
I just don't understand the need for for this. Yes, there's there are swim teams that meet there. How many of those kids are from Green Bay? And I'd, I'd like to know, actually, those kids that are just going there to swim, like in, for an afternoon, are, is there going to be a you know time like for op- them to do that? Like or is open it, pool time? And right. Stuff? Is yeah. it going to be just a bunch of practice and meets? Like, I wonder about that. Mm-hmm. Right. We do, too. We wonder how much time is going to be left for our kids to go up and swim. And to be honest with you, my daughter is 12 now. She doesn't like to go there to swim. It, it, it's right across the street. And I think she maybe went there twice last summer. We live right across the street. So did the entire focus and purpose of this pool change somewhere along the way from being a neighborlyhood pool that we were going to clean up and, and you know, renovize for our, our community to being a business? I don't know. I don't think so. I, because that's, that's, they're not going to increase the size of the pool. That is the size of the pool. It's an Olympic okay. size swimming pool. So they're not going to change it. Yeah, they're not going to okay. change it, but they're right. just going to, you know, I meant in the mindset, up. you know what I mean? The mindset of the... People? Well, it's a subsidy for upper middle class white kids. I don't know if the mi- I think uh, I hate that. I think there were a small group of people who wanted this, and they were the ones who were heard. They were the the loudest voices. There were plenty of people who showed up to the meetings to oppose this, and we were pretty much hushed. Um, I remember the tree woman. There was a woman who showed up at every meeting, and the tree woman. I, I called her the tree woman. <laughs> I love that. Um, she was very opposed to this because of all the trees that are going to get cut oh. down. These huge, gorgeous. So are they? Is that been? I mean, confirmed? Are they going to do that? They will have to remove some of the trees from oh. the park to rebuild this. That's tree. an actual cool. real thing. I mean, they ha- there are huge trees and they've been there yeah. forever, and it, they don't grow overnight. Right. I mean, I didn't know her name. I just yeah. in my head called her Tree Woman because that was her big thing. And I went to several meetings where she was there saying. To, to build the parking lot, you're going to be cutting down trees. Mm-hmm. This is a park. Right. Mm-hmm. This is a park. We go to use the trails and to enjoy the park, and you're going to be taking that away from those of us who go there to enjoy the park. It's part of the heritage of the... Right. Well, I mean, for all intents and purposes, it seems like it's a done deal. So. Right. Right. Yeah. And so I do believe there's there was a, a whole lot of political football happening with that pool. It wasn't necessarily just about the proposal itself. It had a lot to do with, you know, egos and power grabbing and, um, you know, and that's still happening clearly. Which on the leads council. into the entire system. So, uh, let's go into the, <laughs> you have to let her do the segue. Yeah. We're going to segue into <laughs> I can't help it. It's like the system, the system, the system. I like to make, I like to make people beg for it. So yeah. Oh, oh I'm begging. <laughs> okay. All right, here you go. So there's, you know, there's a development. So the city council of Green Bay wants to hire its own attorney because, frankly, they just want to remove the mayor from his chair. Right. Um, and they, okay, so I was told yesterday that they have at their disposal four attorneys that they could be conferring with. They could actually, on the city staff, they have four attorneys oh. Oh. that they could oh, okay. be mm-hmm. going to for advice. Absolutely. And not one of those people is good enough, so they're going to spend taxpayer money on their own attorney. And this was voted through a few nights ago. No, they're going to spend their own money, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, right. No. No, they're going to spend weird. They're going to spend your tax money. And so they're going to do that. Um, they get to decide who it's going to be. Um, and hopefully, I'm assuming they're looking for someone that can give them good advice. And this could be somebody from Green Bay as well who possibly has some of their own ideas about the mayor. Right. Or it'll be him. somebody from out of town, and, which will cost extra. Right. But okay, and, that, and that's fine. And I know, so if you think about that, but the reality is they have to find someone that knows the law because then, you know, the other side will come back and challenge it. So we, they can't just bring someone in that's just going to be a yes man and just going to, you know, right. spew what they want to, to say. They're going to have to have somebody that's solid that can actually provide the case that they want. Otherwise, it's going to be a challenge and this is going to go on for fucking ever. So because you're the chief legal correspondent for Political Radar, Trisha, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. what are your thoughts on that? Well, my thoughts are this. <clears throat> I actually agree that a, an attorney should be brought in for them, and here's why. Um, the city attorney and the assistant city attorneys represent their governmental employees for the city, and the city's interest is for Green Bay. Now, let me just back up for two reasons just go – First, there's a petition at, right after Mayor Schmidt pleaded 
In his case, which was December 5th, he entered a plea to three counts of Class A misdemeanors. And he which, pled down. Let's make sure we know that. Let, I, will be, I, want to, I would be very sure to tell you what he did. He mm-hmm. pled down from fel, three felony counts of attempts to three mis, Class A misdemeanors, which would be each count would be nine months in, in jail, along with a $10,000 fine or both for each count. He did receive no jail time, no probation time as a criminal defense attorney. That is insane. Insane. It was also said on the, in, and, and I also, why is that insane? I've never heard of that. Um, and also not even probation. And, and also let me tell you this, that um, in the complaint, as well as on the record, the judge said, um, made it very clear that there were more counts that were should have been charged, but this was a global offer. So there were many more violations. They just made a global offer. The complaint was filed the same day the offer was given by the district attorney that was on this case. So they made a deal when they filed the complaint. The complaint was, the complaint was based on the deal. I've never heard of that either. Usually you file the complaint based upon the evidence and then plea the case what later. Do you, what do you think that means? It means that they worked together to That's come to this. So fucked up. Prior. And I I am gonna say right now, a mayor Schmidt is our mayor, so I duly respect him. I've known him a lot of years, but this is an, a very odd situation to me. I've never encountered it in my sixteen years of practice, and I'm very knowledgeable in criminal law. I worked mm-hmm. in the DA's office as well as in two DA's office, as well as being a criminal defense attorney. So um, I've tried many cases. I I know this area of law. So that's very strange. He was given a $4,000 fine and 40 hours of community service for this. Um, His attorney then asked instead for leniency if he could pay a $1,500 fine and do no community service. I found that to be extremely... Ins- because, because, quote, I didn't fully understand the campaign finance laws. However, the judge, I quote, unquote, I listened to his verdict, or his, his after, said that the bank records and the evidence that he heard in full fully showed that there was intent to defraud and intent to... Um, uh, Violate the which means if you're if you have intent that means you actually do fully understand the campaign violent finance laws you're just right changing it for yourself or the judge to say that right on the record so with that being said <clears throat> after he pled on the fifth of December um, an individual uh, Van Sistine filed a petition to Scott re- Van what's his name Gary Van Sistine I believe it's Scott it's Scott Van Scott Van. thank you yeah I just never know how to say his last name correctly filed a petition to remove Mayor Schmidt from office, asking that since the court system didn't do it, please, city council, will you do it? In response, um, Mayor Schmidt's attorney from Milwaukee uh, said, if you, do, if you remove him from office, we're going to file suit. We're going to file a lawsuit against you, city council, city of Green Bay, Um, for removing him wrongly, not doing a proper investigation, and for loss of earnings. So with that being said, our city and our council said, whoa, not that we're not threatened. We think you're trying to scare us off, but we need to take this seriously because, number one, we don't want a lawsuit. They've already uproared. Would you please just, why don't you just resign? Mm -hmm. And and then there were comments, or I think it was out in the media that, he may not seek re-election being Mayor Schmidt. Well, if he's not seeking re-election, there's two things that are going on. Um, Lawsuit, 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 because otherwise, if he has a plan to seek re-election, he's really not concerned about, you know, what's going to happen in the next couple of months or whatever. whatever. Wait, his term is through 19. Yeah, it's it's like a little bit over two years. Yeah, so... It's more or less, um, yeah, lawsuit is what I'm thinking, they're looking at. So I think it's very clear that we need to say the city of Green Bay is looking out for themselves because they would be paying out if 
any reason comes about that a proper investigation is not done or it looks like it's done biased. Okay, so you're, what you're saying is they have they have just cause to get this attorney and then to proceed. So, so do there's no conflict of interest because the city has a different interest than maybe the city council. They don't want any sort of look like, uh, uh, should I say, a roar or era of that they're not doing their own, you know, right. And I think it was said very well by um, Chris Weary when he said this is a very serious situation and we want to make the right decision. And quite frankly, they do have a conflict of interest. What they do, if they do remove him, it is different. The city may not want to remove him for the fact that they might not want to pay out uh, ta- you know, dollars from their, because their insurance company may not cover it. I've been through these situations with the with the city and they may not cover it. There may be exclusions in there where it has to come out of the somehow their budget. And it could be big money if we're saying Mayor Schmidt has now lost his reputation due to us. Okay, I think that happened like way long ago when he changed well, you know the documents. But well, so do they have the right to do that? And I think that's what people are the question that people are asking yes. is do they have the right to remove him? Yes, they do. Yeah, they, they absolutely, also have the right to yeah. get an attorney, it's whether they should or not. They absolutely have the right by themselves under the statute to remove him. The the city does. The so city it's how comes. well they present the case. Yes. So I think they want to do it right if they're going to do it without the uh, ramifications of being sued. And if they are, they can defend it well. Um, quite frankly, they have every right to. He has falls under each of the three elements, and one of them is misconduct. And it, in the DA's written offer to um, Mr. Schmidt that was filed with the complaint that was also on the record, it states that he ad- admits to the misconduct that he has done in this case. But the argument is, or I've been hearing the argument um, from his side, is that he wasn't in office doing this. He was a candidate. So what I, about that? Wrong. He was still in office while he was campaigning because he was continue. It was a conti- It was continuing back to back as, uh, uh, um, as an as a mayor. Now I asked this this question because I wasn't sure. Are they out of session at all? Like for instance, our Supreme Court is out of session at times. Now then I might I might consider that to be a time when they would not be, you know. But no, that's not how. Our, our our situation works. He was not a civilian at the time. He was campaigning uh, as a as a current mayor, as an ongoing mayor. No, that that just that just does not fit. That's a argument his attorney is trying to make. It's it's false. And the law is just it's really to some degree it's not specific. It's it can be loosey goosey, and I'm sure that's put out there so that you can get some um, counsel to see how how well you can make that argument. And, you so and the term is ambiguous exactly, and that is a term that is used often in court, and it's used to overturn cases. I don't think it's ambiguous when you look at the facts of the case. He was still our mayor. He was still making decisions while he was campaigning, and actually, a lot of people get upset about that. Like for instance, when Governor Walker was maybe going to go for the presidency, people were upset. How can you be campaigning for? presidency and still be aren't you doing your job as our governor so that right there is a perfect example you you know you are still our gov he was campaigning while being our governor that was the situation with can't our- have it both ways so they're they're more likely to remove him this way via a uh, recall i believe I, mean, I think they they may be aware of that they would need over eight thousand signatures or something it would be a lot right. of work yeah. right it's a lot of they signatures. need nine out of twelve um aldermen or city council members yeah. to remove them. Okay. Right, but if they went recall, right. they'd have to get signatures. and. So when I look at the vote for the people who voted for the attorney, so just tell me what you people think about this, because I think it's, you look at the people that voted for the attorney, and you can co- probably line up those people for, they're the, you know, they're on the, the edge of the people that would possibly vote to keep him as chair. And those people are the same people that are, you know, they haven't really voiced a lot of opinions on this um, situation. They're waiting to hear the evidence. They're waiting to see what happens. But I just wonder about, the, this is what I wonder about, because it's all, you know, psychology and politics. I, I wonder if there's something to the, you know, the fact that they didn't want the attorney. Will this skew their vote? I wonder about that. 
You mentioned something about um, you wonder if the attorney would have their own opinions or be able to sway them one way or the other. I can tell you right now that person's uh, opinions are going to have, if, if there aren't very many attorneys that are going to put their own opinions on the line on this case, especially, we just don't do that. We're really giving you a legal opinion, it, very much so in this situation. And I think it's pretty clear what the legal opinion is. The writing is on the wall of based upon the facts and the law of what should be done. Er but I wonder about the people that voted to not um, approve the, you know, to acquire the attorney. What was the I vote again? That. It, Seven to four? I'm trying to remember. Um, it, but it was the typical, I, I think it's, the, yeah, is that what it was? I think it was close. It was close like that. Okay. And I, I, I agree with what you're saying. Yeah. So I feel like when, um, if and when the opinion comes back, it's going to support um, what the law has already said and what maybe the, the person that filed the com the petition to begin with is is that misconduct, corruption, misconduct, and distrust in our mayor is out in the public. And do our citizens our citizens feel very strongly about that? And our our politicians should too. Our and choosing the right attorney is going to make or break this entire situation. I believe that. I mean, whoever they decide to go with, and I believe it's Tom DeWayne, who's council president, and uh, Mark, Mark Stoyer. They are the two that were asked to do that job. Yeah. And hopefully they won't drag it out forever because this is not good for us. To and it's a here. conflict because I'm chief legal correspondent yes. for the political radar. So Why? I, had, I cannot <laughs> do the job. So, okay. Um, yeah, that would be a huge I conflict. won't forward that email on to you then. <laughs> All right. Um, I'm not, you know, able to do that. But you have to wonder who they're going to come up with. And first of all, who the hell would want that? Can I make one more comment? Sure. Just so that out yeah. there. Okay. So the case, uh, because it was in uh, Brown County, obviously, the judges recused themselves and wouldn't hear the case here. So that's why a different judge and a was brought in as well as a different district attorney because originally the, the investigation was done by a Brown County dist, or Brown County uh, detective. Mm -hmm. They picked Milwaukee County as the venue for the district attorney there, to, not the district attorney, but a, an assistant district attorney in Milwaukee to do the investigation. He's the same one that was investigating Scott Walker. Correct. Okay, so that doesn't make well, me feel but, warm and cozy at all. Sure, but I, I want I think you'll like my point. So Mayor Schmidt hires a Milwaukee attorney that is very kosher with the like hometowning it. He somebody that's going to work with the district attorney's office in Milwaukee that knows them, so that I feel like that was a smart move on Mayor Schmidt's part because then they worked with the coercion. The, well, I'm not saying that. Coercion? I'm, I'm saying it. I, Coercion. You can. Did I'm I say that correctly? Because I'm tired. Is that what it, the word? I, I'm saying that he, he so. made a smart decision. That's why he has a Milwaukee attorney mm -hmm. working with a Milwaukee, for, you know, mm -hmm. PA. But they're, I'm with you around that. <laughs> okay, so when people are able to work together, it's coercion. And when, when they, but when they don't, it's dysfunctional, like our city council. Sure. I don't know. So, I mean, if there's a case in Shawano, Shawano's at Mars to me, so I will tell them hire uh, an attorney in Shawano because you will be able to work with the DAs there yeah. better than I will. So that's what I'm. So what's the opposite of that when you're not able to work with that? Bullshit. <laughs> but I mean, oh wait, I, I, I tried. I can say that I'm not on the Nick and Mino show. I'm not bleep. No, no, no. We're oh. we're unscripted and uncensored. We, so we what is the opposite? It. We could put a funny bleep over that. That'd so you're crazy. saying so? No, you're saying that it's not coercion, but. So if what is I mean, I you know what is the opposite of that? I I'm able to work with the DAs here well too, but there's a what does that mean? You're able to work with? Can you explain that for those of us who aren't legal? Sure, beagles? you you have a relate you build right. relationships over 16 years, so you you can they trust you that when you go to them that you're going to be able to. There's no bias there if you have a relationship. I don't know about that. No. There's always no, bias. There, but, but there's a You're saying no and you're saying yes. I'm well, there's a respect level, though. So I don't if we have a guest say, that we've had on before, we're going to have a, a, a different rapport than somebody that we, we've we never met. Like, I don't get a deal because yeah. um I, they like me. Right. How do you know that? Because they don't like me. I'm aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> it's just it's being aggressive and doing your job. They know I'll do my okay. job and I come to them in my case. But I'm what I'm saying is that 
in this case, it's a, the outcome. It was absurd. I don't care how good you are. I don't understand how that outcome came. Mm -hmm. And, you know, white collar crime or embezzlement cases oftentimes don't see prison, you know, a lot, or, but no, no probation even, no, no terms other than a fine in community service is crazy. Didn't embezzle anything. I'm not saying he did. No, I know, but so like the but law I, is a little bit out I of said whack a too. White, it, it's a white collar crime case, yeah. though. Uh, that's what I'm comparing it yep. to. Um, he, uh, Elliot, he changed the name. There's, somebody doesn't exist right. on a ballot. There's no person existing. He also yeah. did not. They all do that. I'm telling you, they all they do. That. No, not they don't it. all do that. <laughs> yes, they no, do. They don't. <laughs> Elliot, Elliot, that doesn't make it right. It doesn't. But because part of the, part of the issue is so is this, this twenty five hundred dollar limit is ludicrously low. You know what though, and he also so. didn't tell the truth to the clerk of court, which is another. So are you saying that if the limit was higher, he wouldn't have? Um, he wouldn't have needed to. The, the, all the problems were. He didn't need of to this. anyway. He didn't need the money. But you and have he still to did follow it. the law or the rules. I would love to not follow all of the ethical things duties that I have because you know how, what how crazy some of them are. Absolutely. And, and a lot of my people, my cohorts that. Don't do it. But does that mean, oh, oh they didn't do it, so I'm not going to do it. So, no, that's not. So it's in your professional opinion yeah. as yeah. a chief legal correspondent for Political Radar. Yes. That. Yes. Where's and, this going? And, mm -hmm. and Trish and Trishanel Law Offices. Ooh, oh, not, <laughs> don't throw that in, Rhonda. That's no. dirty. Okay, I'm sorry. That's I'm sorry. dirty. But it is your professional opinion that they have the right to do this and they should move forward. They should. They have the right to get their attorney, and they have the right to uh, remove him the from city the chair. Council. So the city council of Green Bay has the right to remove Mayor Gr Green Bay Mayor Jim Schmidt from his chair. They do under Wisconsin oh. state statute. Okay. So should we expect to see that happen? Well, the magic ball <laughs> says. Mm -hmm. The magic ball says, let's look at the evidence and yeah. the law. It should. Is this going to be would, an open public courtroom or <laughs> meeting or whatever, right. however you want to look I at it? Tell you, do you it's a quasi-judicial hearing, you right? know the Yeah, it's a quasi-judicial yeah. hearing that happens for okay. when, on the removal. Mm -hmm. And so is it public? It can be. It can be. It can be. How public. can it not be public? They're spending public <laughs> money to have their attorney represent them. Right. And, and we that, don't get to be in that room? That's my question, too. It, it, should the taxpayers be paying for this lawyer? Should the taxpayers be paying for your pool? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Pools, I, lawyers, whatever. We don't need <laughs> streets. We don't need potholes, infrastructure. We just need pools and lawyers. Okay, Sorry. so I think we need to wrap it up because I think we're over it, time but a bit. I, I thought right? that. It was a good answer back, yeah. right? Okay. Well, I, I so that agree was, with so you. you're saying yeah. no, the taxpayers should not pay for Who it. Who else right? would pay for it? I think you know what? I think that this I wish that the city of Green Bay would be the ones that would because they're the ones holding the liability at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. And it's worth it to have a proper investigation then and have it done right if if he if he is going to be removed. Right, because really it'll end up being a lot more time, energy, resources, back and forth. Right. We don't need that right now. So we need to just move on, get this done and yep. move on. Right. Rip off the move right. on. And yeah. Okay. So it's not my opinion. It you know, I don't have a personal opinion of what should happen. I'm giving you my Legal, legal opinion as the chief legal correspondent for, of political radar. Yeah. Okay, that's great. I'm so glad that you were able to give that to us. I know a lot of people are asking. They're really wondering about that. Um, I think it's Thank it's you. a huge question right Will now. Will you come back on when, when people have questions? For Absolutely, us? I'd love to. Or if they say you're wrong. I, w I will. <laughs> are you I ready? Will. For, are you ready I for the hate mail? I stand behind my word. I'm not. And I'm not. I'm not giving personal opinions. And I did this too for for the other channels media that I worked for. It's not a personal opinion. I'm giving a legal opinion on what the law okay. is. And that's really true. I mean, my personal opinions on a lot of things, people don't want to hear, <laughs> quite yeah. frankly. They don't give a shit. They want to know what the law is. And that's what I'm here to tell you. And that's what people want to know. So yeah. thanks. For, we appreciate that. No and um, I'm glad to to have you Thank get you. it out there. Thank you. And thanks, Cassandra, for coming on.
yeah. and letting us. She's know. trying to wrap things up. I guess I am eh? trying to wrap things up because you know our our producer giving likes us, us to Elliot to didn't edit say, things get to and say all timely his matter wrap today. Yeah. I love it that you're here because yeah. last time I couldn't get control of anything when you were gone. I sat in for you. Yeah, it was it was it was chaos, Rhonda. It was chaos. <laughs> I thought it was great. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I do have one more question. Will yes. the city have the live feedback up for the next day council? Now? Okay. That's a whole nother episode. So is it? What is she? Okay, the city no, what she's referring to is feed. there was a council meeting Tuesday night. The city, the live feed. No, I want to say something about this. The live feed wasn't working, and of course I'm not a techie person, but you are. So the live feed wasn't working, but my Wi-Fi was working. Like it was flawless. I was in that and qu- probably for three hours we were I there. Wondered why and it was, was working. No, no. There was no live feed. It, they were recording the meeting, and we had Wi-Fi while we were in the council chamber. But the live feed wasn't working, so the people at home could watch. What do you think about that? They didn't test it. So if they're going to provide a service to citizens, they should make sure that it works. Are you sure it wasn't I, on purpose? So, so much like I don't think a, a judge can say there's malicious intent in, in you know, w- just yeah. by looking at what happened. Uh, I don't think you can say that. But boy, it sure is fishy, isn't it? Like, it's a it, little strange. It, <laughs> it's just strange. I, it is frustrating. frustrating. Quite frankly, I believe under the the ordinances and the in the statutes that you know that has they have to provide that to the public. So that's interesting. I mean, I don't know what. Well, they don't have to provide a live feed, but the, so they, right, they, they recorded it and recorded. put it up later. I think I don't. I haven't actually You're right. watched but it. But as okay, so as a tech recording. person though, recording. Elliot, as someone who's you know you're recording. you're gifted yeah. in that area, so. Why would I have really great Wi-Fi? They're recording the meeting, but there's no live feed. It seems What's fishy, right? What's the glitch yeah. that would have to so happen? Somebody broke something. Uh, it could have been some kind of equipment failure thing. I mean, things do happen. So and I, should there be some sort of, we're sorry, the city of Green Bay was well, going to let you know that you know you yeah. weren't able to watch this very important so you have to do historical meeting. Right. That was a historical it. meeting. Yeah, I right. didn't, They should have known before it. the meeting. Like the live feed should be set up and tested like right before the meeting. I, I, that I don't understand. Either they're doing it or they're not. I call bullshit. I, I think it I was sort done of on purpose. do too. I like it, it's R- Rhonda, not you just fun and really games. good point because I didn't get to hear that, and I would have to do an open records request to get that recording. Well, they uh, it's I think on YouTube. They, yeah, they do publish them after the fact. Oh, so, but it was live. Right. So we no, were all tuned in, you know. Yeah. But there, like, there are literally people who were home and commenting that they couldn't see the live this guy. feed. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, you're always home commenting. That's not like That's, something freaking well, new. But we would have changed our plans for the evening. The problem was I right. was actually sick. You're right. And otherwise would have been in the meeting. Um, I actually at one point got in my car and got halfway there and then got a message saying, go home. Rhonda is doing it on Facebook. <laughs> so I did. Thank, thankfully, you know, Facebook Live, you can. So I did the. Did you hold your committee. phone the whole time? Oh, my God. I did. did your the arms whole time. fall off? I kept, I was <laughs> now I'm going to watch your Facebook. So that's it was, awesome. it was solid. I don't know how she did it. <laughs> I No, I, the committee of the whole. When they met at the very end of the meeting, they did to discuss, you know, whether or not to yeah. to retain an attorney. So I. Did hold my phone up and I was able to to live feed with Facebook Live, but it's not interesting. Why did my little iPhone mm-hmm. in the council chambers work and the live feed? I'm Why sorry. don't they have something better? Yeah, yeah well, that and it's crazy. I was uh, we were actually in the Taco Bell drive thru on the way to the movie. I was watching your live feed, so we have this magical technology, and they couldn't get their little piece working. I okay. totally agree with. Can that. I say one more thing? Yeah. What about the the finger pointing between Zema and? Mayor Schmidt, you stole hot dogs. No, I didn't steal hot dogs. I stole brats. But that was too, how many years ago? Well, well, you sold. Ca- That's I mean, the sad state of affairs yeah. we're in right I, now. I just say that that picture, that you know, the picture, yeah. the video, mm-hmm. that says it all. That's Green yeah. Bay right it now. Reminds me of when the Supreme Court they went at it, Ziegler and Prosser, I think it was. It's just. With the other aldermen, too, in the background laughing. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. I mean, really. We were all doing that, though, at home. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so we talked about a lot. We covered a lot. Um, there's so much happening. And, again, we're so grateful that you came on. So if people want to harass you guys, Cassandra, how would you like them to get in touch with you? Not at all. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you can find me on Facebook. My name on Facebook is Cassandra Lynn. Or you can find me on Twitter, MarathonMom3877. Nice. Actual marathon. So I wasn't wrong about that. And what about you? Web page, Trisha Nell, or Trisha Nell.com. Facebook page. What? What? Why are you laughing? Is that my web? That's my web page, right? Uh, 
Just tell people how you want them to get in touch with you. It's all good. Whatever. I, <laughs> I'm everywhere. Trisha now, I have a Facebook page. I Twitter, whatever. I'm everywhere. It's all He's good. He's everywhere. It's all I'm good. everywhere. I'm, a, I'm everywhere as well. Everybody should go to politicalradar.com slash 54 for show notes. You should go to the Political Radar community and weigh in on these very important topics, pools and lawyers. Yeah. And I do podcasts with Elliot, Ideas by Elliot. I know. They're all with her now. I don't know what happened with that. You have anything, any closing stuff? Um, not necessarily. Um, I, I, I know there's a lot of people joining the Political Radar community Facebook page. Yeah. I want these people to subscribe and um, start listening to the podcast because that's the whole point. Yeah. Let's sure. do that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thanks for listening to Political Radar. To ensure that you never miss an episode, subscribe on iTunes or your favorite podcast app. To stay up to date, visit politicalradar.com or connect with us on Facebook or Twitter.